Are you ready to learn really fast? Are you ready to change your life really fast? Let's say with women, dating, money, success. Well, a lot of my clients are looking to grow, looking to change, looking to become the best versions of themselves. In this video, I wanna talk about how you can grow really fast employing these simple principles. Okay, we're about to get started, but before I do, I wanna invite you to like, subscribe, and share. Now let's get started. Okay, number one, I want you to think about the big picture. You know, the biggest mistake I've made in life was not thinking about the big picture. I always looked at the moment. I said, that girl right there didn't like me. It means something. My life sucks. I'll never get a better one. Or in business, you know, I, I lost some money. Oh, this sucks. I'll never get it back. It was always this moment right here was the worst possible moment when something went wrong. And when it went right, I would wanted to hang on to it. Oh my God, she likes me. I got to keep her. I got to I gotta fall in love with her. I got to keep her around or I'll, I'll never get somebody this good again. And in both cases, that created nothing but more suffering. You know, when I'd push away the pain, I would create more pain every time. I couldn't see the big picture. And I'll get to that in a minute. When I tried to hold on to a woman, I would inevitably smother her and scare her away. I mean, I'm sure you've all been smothered. I've been smothered by a woman. It kind of sucks. Attachment is the source of all suffering. When you see the big picture that everything is in rhythms and cycles, day and night, up and down, that everything does truly pass. Whenever I'd go through a breakup, I think I'll never get a girl like this again if she was amazing. And then sure enough, after I healed from it, I get somebody just as good or better. Somebody that really made me excited. I began to see that the pain was just a springboard to something better, that it was eating something up inside of me that needed to die before I could grow to the next level. When it came to money, it was the same thing. When the, my accounts went down in crypto, I'd be eating myself up. They went up, I'd be all excited. When I stopped, just put the money away and stopped worrying about it. I hodled in that case. I started to look back every once in a while and I always had way more money in the long run. It was going like this, but up, overall up. Same thing in my skiing. When I skied, I'd get out on the ski slope and some days I sucked, some days I was great. Some days my legs were sore and I was all beat up and other days I was on point. And when the, the days that sucked, sucked and I would slow down and relax and play a little smaller and just be careful, played at the level I was at that day, I would do just fine. I'd learn, I'd grow. And then the next time it went, everything was fresh and I'd healed my like grown muscles in my legs because I've been pushing so much and I took some time off to heal. Then the next thing you know, I'm flying and I'm in flow state. I'm laying these deep carbs and I'm like, that's even better, you know? And I began to realize that that is the cycle of life. It's up and down. And when you begin to see it that way, that life it literally is, and I believe this hundred percent, I'm gonna invite you into this belief, always trying to give you something better. So when something falls apart, something doesn't work, life is trying to bring something better in after that. And if you get out of the way and you enjoy the downtime, you relax into it, you'll sail right into this something better next. That's the way it works. But if you fight it, you delay the something better and you can actually delay the something better permanently. If you really hold on and attach to a failure, attach to a woman, attach to if there's a woman watching this, a man, and you won't let them go, you just can't let that other person in, this new amazing uh, opportunity in. So that's the first thing is really starting to see the big picture of the swings of life, how there's ups and downs, there's seasons, there's days and night, and that's just how the game's played. Relax, learn to be patient, enjoy your coffee in the meantime, take your downtime, relax. You know, maybe it's time to go get in a hot sauna, take a good nap, relax a little bit, and then watch your life change because of it. Number two, look at the patterns in your life. You've got a lot of patterns in your life, right? And if you look at those patterns, you're gonna start to see patterns that just don't serve you anymore that you're doing over and over again i'll give you an example a good friend of mine has a tendency to shoot for the moon he loves to shoot for the moon in business he goes for it he does it with women he does it with business does it with everything i'm gonna throw everything at this and this is gonna be it and he puts all his money into one opportunity and boom the guy steals his money it falls apart that everything doesn't work and and then it starts to take off and he starts to make money and then crash or he makes money for a little while then crash and this up and down i watched it for years in his life i've known him for what nine years now and the other day he had another one he put all this money into this opportunity and suddenly ah it was all taken away from him ah it was such a great deal everything was going to work and i had to say to him i've seen this cycle in you a bunch of times over nine years and he goes what do you mean and he couldn't see it and i said 
how about this opportunity here where you went up then you crash lost it all then this opportunity number two and then a three i think i got up to like four opportunities or five opportunities <laughs> and he laughed and he goes yeah i couldn't see that that's interesting wow oh my god i have to think about that and he started to see that he was running a pattern over and over and over again and it needed to be broken I used to draw narcissistic women. I used to draw these really hot, narcissistic, mean women. And I started to see it. And that came from my, my mother was bipolar, probably borderline. And she was just mean sometimes and she could attack. And I realized after like three or four, I had them in employers. I had them in women I dated. I had them all over my life. And, the, and I draw bipolar women like crazy. And I started to look and I say, wait a minute. I keep drawing these women over and over again. It's a pattern. So what makes me think the next one won't be the same? Because that's what I get attracted to. So right in the middle of being attracted to this beautiful narcissistic woman uh, that, uh, and I was being totally codependent. I was now, and you know, I was picking them. I was trying to be this broken guy probably with them and say, I'm going to fix you. And then I'm going to feel better because of it, right? This whole game we're doing. So we're both guilty. Right in the middle of that, though, I said, you know what? This has got to change. There's only one way it's going to change. I got to slam the door on this relationship. There was part of me that was like, it's just like ripping off an arm. I can't let her go. I got to keep working on this. I got to fight to make this work. But that's all I'd ever done with every relationship. So what I did here was I just said, no more. I'm done. And it hurt. It ripped my heart out. I said, we can't talk anymore. We're over. I'm learning to say no. I looked and modeled somebody I knew. I thought about him a lot. Who was really good at ending relationships and saying, I'm done. I'm going to go find somebody else. This is not working. And he would just let go. He would heal quickly and find somebody else pretty quickly because he was good at letting go. So that's what I did. I just let go. I went through the pain. I suffered and I slammed that door. Is that how I saw it? Now, it might be a little harsh in saying I slammed that door, but that's what I did. And what I noticed was I never got a woman like that again in my life. Every woman after that was way more of a sweetheart. It was so awesome. And life just got better because I showed my subconscious mind, I'm going to let go now and I'm not going to look back. It was so powerful. And I saw that needed to be done because of the patterns in my life. We've all got these patterns, patterns with money, patterns with women, patterns with feeling sorry for ourselves, up and down, up and down patterns with i know one girl in my life that she loves to say she's fat all the time and she, every cup every month or so i'm fat i'm fat and goes through this cycle of being fat and if she could just interrupt that pattern because she's not really fat she's just having a bloated moment right she could just interrupt that in her mind she'd stop trying to play that game with me it would completely end the whole cycle would probably die and she'd start learning to laugh at it right to do that i kind of played with her the last time she tried it on me she called me said i'm really i'm fat and i said you are fat <laughs> And I just wrote that back and she goes, oh, you're a dick. And I said, yeah, but you're fat. And she laughed and then she wrote back and I wanted to see what she would do with it. She's pretty tough. And she said, wrote back to me. She said, well, you're fat. And I said, I am fat. <laughs> and I sent her a picture of a fat guy out in the country with a beanie on, um, with his belly out. And I said, yeah, that's, that's mountain man, Brian up in the mountains. That's, that's my belly. And then she sent me back, uh, then she sent me back a picture of a, a fat chick with a <laughs> chocolate all over her face because she loves to eat chocolate. And I said, see, now we're fat together. And we both started laughing. It was a way of breaking the cycle rather than trying to convince her she wasn't fat. We were playing. You can, yeah, you got to know who you can do that stuff with. And you got to know when to do that. You got to get somebody ready for that. She was tough. She could handle it. So we play because some girls are very sensitive about this. So you got to you gotta watch who and when you do it. But again, breaking those cycles is awesome and it really creates huge results okay number three global beliefs we have so many global beliefs that don't serve us you know one of my big ones was not enough time there's not enough time i gotta get everything done today i gotta get everything done today it's not gonna get done oh my god i got so much work to do i wasn't projecting things out to the week to the month to the quarter and i was constantly overwhelmed with all the projects because i was always taking on more and then trying to do it all every day that was a burner man and learning to say there's more than enough time in an easy, relaxed way, and then constantly using a releasing, revealing process to release on this idea that there's not enough time. Just constantly letting it go, letting it go, and then saying there's more than enough time, and opening my heart again to this idea there's more than enough time. Taking my time, slowing down, never hurrying, get, being efficient, getting things done, you know, being focused, but doing it and being present in the moment and trusting that the rest will get taken care of. Because if I go back to the second rule and say patterns, well, 
my pattern was to always get everything done, just stressed without enough time. I'd rush, 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 push, 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 and I'd eventually get it all done. It always did get done. There was never a problem. So when I looked at that pattern, I said, why don't I just do it in an easy, relaxed way since it's all getting done anyways? I have this great pattern of getting everything done and being successful. So what am I worried about? Why am I rushing? Matter of fact, the rushing is slowing me down because by rushing, you screw things up and have to do it over again. So by working those two together, that really allowed me to change that global belief. Other global beliefs are money doesn't grow on trees. There's not enough for everybody. That abundance isn't a real thing. Um, things like that. Things that affect every part of your life. How about the simple global belief that I'm stupid? You know, I'm not very smart. That could be just the belief that you're living out. You might be brilliant. I have a client right now. I'm breaking him of that. He plays dumb and he's brilliant. He doesn't even see how smart and how embodied he already is. He's way ahead of the curve if he just let that one belief go because it affects every part of his life, right? Um, how about men are toxic, toxic masculinity. Oh, it's bad, that type of stuff. Or I have to be nice to everybody to get ahead. If I'm mean at all, or I, I set boundaries or I say no, that everything's gonna fall apart, you know? And most nice guys, they think being assertive is mean. So they don't even understand that a lot of times when they are mean, they're actually just being assertive and people respect them and they're shocked when people don't get mad at them. So you gotta recalibrate that stuff. So again, these global beliefs affect every part of your life, your money, your relationships, your dating, your sex life, all of it gets massively affected by this. So as you change those, your life begins to change. Number four, payoffs. What payoff do you get from struggling? You know, uh, I used to get a lot of payoffs from struggling. My mom taught me when I was young because she was depressed and bipolar and kind of all over the place that she liked to suffer. She really liked to sit in her bed and wallow and suffer. And if I was happy and I said, mom, we're going to do this. I'm going to I'm gonna get excited about things. She'd kind of pull me down. She didn't want me to get up there too, too far ahead of the family. I mean, we all suffered together. But when I came in suffering, mom, I suck. My life sucks. You'd be, oh, baby, you can do anything. It's okay. And she would want me to suffer with her. And I learned that behavior at a young age. That's why my life didn't take off till later. I had to break that one core behavior. Whenever I got a business partner, was working with somebody, I wanted to suffer. I wanted to hold them back. I wanted to struggle because I got the secret payoff of feeling love. The love I had with my family. My mom made me feel, helped me to feel, I don't want to say made me, helped me to feel loved when I suffered. And so I try to suffer with my business partner, try to suffer with my early relationships. And I didn't even know I was doing it. Logically, it didn't make sense. But when I saw that there was a little endorphin rush, a little, for lack of a better term, kind of like turn on endorphin rush in the middle of suffering, like I felt good with it, you know, because I got that charge I got from my mother. I began to realize that I was a little addicted to the suffering and we all get some secret payoff from, from our behavior, especially our negative behaviors. They don't stay around if they're not giving us some sort of payoff. So start seeing the payoff in each one of the behaviors that hold you back. You know, if you start to succeed, you're gonna have to take on responsibility. You're gonna be seen more. The, the fear of failure comes up. The, uh, if you start to make more money, you have to pay taxes. If you got fear of the tax man, what well, you see by staying broke, I'm, I'm safe. I don't have to deal with that, right? And these subconscious payoffs really hold us back. What are some of your payoffs? If you can think of one or two payoffs right now, drop it into the comments. Let's get a, a conversation going about that so we can all see we have these games going on and help us all to grow. It would be awesome if you did that. And I really appreciate it. And number five, I want to invite you into this idea that when your mind is just spinning, I used to go on the spins all the time. That's when my mind takes over. I can't feel my heart. I can't feel my body. No, I'm big on embodiment. I can't relax into the real thinking part of the body, which is down here. It's the core of the body that, and my mind takes over that I do meditation. I just stop and I surrender. It takes an hour, it takes an hour, it takes 30 minutes, it takes 30 minutes, but I want to get out of this because if this is racing and I'm in the spins and I'm in a lot of frustration, which is an indication you're in the spins, then anything I do anyways is probably going to get done poorly, incorrectly, wrong. But when I get myself out of the spins and I learn to open my heart and relax and feel again and lean with my heart, everything gets done 10 times faster, 10 times better, 10 times easier. And I don't have to go back and reduplicate work because I just did a crappy job, did it wrong, screwed something up. I don't send something out that looks bad. 
or is bad. And that is really important. So meditation is huge for learning to stop. The welcoming process in releasing is a form of meditation, just stopping, feeling, opening your heart. I also have the full body scan, which people love on YouTube, which is a great meditation for just learning to feel the whole body and stopping. We'll link that somewhere in here. Definitely check out the full body scan if you haven't already. Now, on top of that, there's the revealing process that goes with step number five. When you can learn to stop and you can learn to just let go really get good at letting go of these attachments and these aversions that are holding you back and there's a whole process and a technique for that you can read the book letting go by hawkins the sedona method or you could get my course the revealing process which is my version of it where i go deep into these principles helping you to understand how to let go of these stored emotions learning to welcome them learning to be with them learning to observe them learning to turn the observer on and gently let them go so that you begin to expand open more and more less attachments according to the buddha would be uh less suffering no attachments no suffering right the buddha said the source of all suffering is attachment and that's what i'm talking about letting go of your attachment and your aversions to pain and suffering and bad thoughts and bad emotions which we all have we think if we hold on to it, we can fix it. If I study it enough, I'll get it right. I'll work on it hard enough. I'll eventually figure it out. But the truth is you just got to learn to let it go. The addiction to thinking about it is the problem. So definitely check out the revealing process. There'll be a link somewhere in this course to uh, check out the revealing process. Definitely check out my previous video on getting over struggle. It'll help you to go a little deeper into some of these principles and really help to set you free. So I'll see you in the next video. Definitely remember to comment and remember only the confident really live.